Welcome to A Message from Heaven, presented by The Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee, where John Shannon Sr. is the preacher. Here you can expect a cordial greeting from those who love God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is our privilege to invite you to study with us from the Bible, God's holy and divine will made known unto man. And now presenting evangelist John Shannon Singer. Welcome again. This is, I'm John Shannon uh, from the Church of Christ. It meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. We thank you so very much for tuning us in uh, each Wednesday, uh, whatever day you see this broadcast. Thank you so very much. And we're delighted to see you in the marketplaces, in the malls, and many of you I've uh, seen in person and you're coming and we're even studying the Bible with many of you who've been watching the television program. And it is my goal from the rest of my life is to live God's word and to lecture on God's word and try to help people to be liberated and have the liberation that comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you in a very way, very positive way uh, for coming to the building where we meet. Um, we will continue our study today on the subject that we are last, last announced, the five W's in the Christian's life. Uh, the first one we dealt with uh, was the Word of God, and today we will deal with the worship of God. And then after that, we will perhaps deal with the walk for God, and then we'll uh, look at the work for God, and then we will look at the world for God. Now, today I would like for you to turn to the book of John chapter 4, and verse number 24, and we will look at four points in this particular lesson, and we'll look at uh, the worship to God. Now, my responsibility as a Christian to the word, to the worship, uh, to the walk for God, to the uh, work of God, and to the world for God, my personal responsibility. Now, today... <clears throat> Look at John, <clears throat> excuse me, 4, verse number 24. Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what Jesus said. Now, talk about worship. <clears throat> We're talking about worship according to the Bible. We're talking about worship in the New Testament church. Now, there is many uh, worships in the Bible, but we're talking about worship in the New Testament church today. Now, I know there was a church in the wilderness that Moses and the Jews were members of. Uh, Acts chapter 7 and verse number 30, 38 and 39, if my memory concerns me, correct, that's the church in the wilderness. That was a Jewish church. That was a national church for national religion. And they did things under that system that we are not allowed to do today. Now, that's why the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 2 and verse number 15, Paul said to Timothy to, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now, don't go to the Bible and say, we're just going to take the Bible and we're just going to worship the way they worship in the Old Testament. Oh, you can't do that. Why? Because we're not under the law of Moses. And we are not ministers of the Old Testament. 
Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 6, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. He said, for the letter kill it. What does it mean, the letter kill it? Under the Old Testament, if you violated the law of Moses, you, would, you died physically. The Bible said in Hebrews 11, or 10, 28, he that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So we're not under the law of Moses. We're under the law of Christ. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes it. Christ is the end of the law. So we're under the New Testament. Hebrews of 8 and 5 and follow. We're under a new covenant. It's a better covenant and it's established upon better covenant. We have the New Testament church <clears throat> and we have the New Testament as the law of Christ. And that's what we worship God according to the New Testament. Now, in John 4, <clears throat> excuse me, John 4 and verse number 24, God, point number one, our aim is God. Point number one is aim. Point number two, that God is a spirit. They that worship him must. Underline the word must. That's absolute. That's being precise. So point number one is our aim. What is it? God. Point number two is our, watch it, is absolute. Must. That's something we must do. Must. Worship God in spirit. That means attitude. Point number three, the right attitude when we worship God. Uh, point number four, authority. Get it now. In truth, God, that's our aim, is a spirit. And they that worship him must. That's absolute. Worship him in spirit, that's the right attitude. And in truth, that's the right authority. So we're going to talk about it. Aim, absolute, authority, well, uh, attitude, and authority. Now, let's go to the text. <clears throat> Say God is a spirit. Our aim is to worship God. We don't worship angels, angels. We don't worship human beings. We don't worship statues. We don't worship idols. We worship God according to the dictates of the Holy Spirit. Now, in our worship to God, as Christians, we are to please God in our worship. Listen to me. Many individuals like to worship God the way they, you can't do that. You can't do that. God is the audience. We are the participants. Many times I'll look at individuals on television and, uh, and I know how they do, many of them do in their worship service. You see them hand clapping. Can you imagine I'm performing in an audience, for an audience, and I'm hand clapping and they're not. Listen, God is the audience. We are the participants. And everybody that worship God, we all must do the same thing to, for God. Now, God tells us how he wants to be worshipped. You don't have the right to tell God how you're going to worship him. God has the right. He's the worship, and he has the right to tell the worshipers how to do it. That's good, isn't it? No. God is our aim. We don't worship angels. We don't worship idols. We don't worship one another. We worship God. We don't bow down to idols. Talking about Christians. We worship God Almighty. And it's done through Jesus Christ. Uh, Second Peter, uh, first Peter 2 and verse uh, 2 and verse 5 and Second Peter, I believe it is, of 1 Peter 2 and verse number 9, we worship God and it's done through 
Jesus Christ and is done in the church of Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us in Ephesians, this might as well get it out the way now, in Ephesians, let me point this out. In Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 19, let's look at it. Ephesians 2, 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Look at verse 21. It says, in whom? In Christ. All the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Now you see, you can't worship God unless you're in the temple. Well, what is the temple? The temple is the church. Well, where is it? It's in the Lord. Who is the Lord? Christ. So therefore, until a person gets in Christ Jesus and in his church, you can't actually, uh, you can't worship God. If you do, you're in vain. Because God only accepts worship in his son and in his church. And the church is in him. We just read it. Let me pause here a moment. The sanctuary, the building is, the physical building, that's not a sanctuary, ladies and gentlemen. The sanctuary is a holy place. And the holy place is in Christ. And do you know in the sanctuary, under Old Testament law, you couldn't bring no dead body in the sanctuary. So if that's a sanctuary that you call your sanctuary, you couldn't have a funeral there. You see that? So we worship God, watch it, in the church throughout all ages, Ephesians 2 and verse number 21 and Ephesians 3 and verse number 21. Well, so our aim is to worship God. Well, go a little further. Absolute. God is a spirit and they to worship him must. That's absolute. Must. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. Must. Absolute. If you're going to enter the kingdom. Now, if you're going to worship God, there's some things you must do. What do you mean must do? Must. Can't get around that. Well, I don't want to. Well, you know, you must do it. Well, they, I don't care what they say it. Jesus said you must. What? God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. That's the attitude. Wait a minute. You don't give God the bad attitude in worship. And I know when we go to worship our God, we want to be lifted up and all of that. I know that. But we better have the right attitude and we better prepare ourselves to worship God with the right attitude. This old bad attitude come to worship service, sitting, sitting, not praying, not singing. Let me pause here a moment. How in the world can you say that you're worshiping God and singing and don't sing? Let me just throw this in a little ahead of myself. There's five avenues of worship. They're singing. You got to sing. There's the preaching or teaching. You got to listen to that. There's the praying. We have men to lead prayer, but while the men are up, a man is up leading prayer, women in the audience and the men in the audience and kids who are in the body of Christ, you need to be praying as well. Not playing, praying. We partake of the Lord's Supper. When? On the first day of the week, in our worship, every first day of the week. And then, watch it, there's a giving and there's a singing. Now, how are you not going to participate in the worship of God? That's what God wants. He doesn't want anything else. Now, how's your attitude? Well, I didn't feel good this morning, so I don't feel like singing. Well, you got a bad attitude. You just might as well get up, go on back home, and go to bed because God's not accepting that kind of stuff. No. No. Our aim is God. The absolute, you must worship God in spirit and in truth. 
Watch it. That's the right attitude. Let's go over here and let's look at 1 Corinthians. Let me show you something what Paul said. 1 Corinthians. Let's turn over. We got the time. 1 Corinthians uh, 14. Uh, 15. Let's look at this. First Corinthians 14, 15, Paul said, what is it then? I will pray with the spirit. What do you mean? Pray with the right attitude. I will sing with an understanding also. I will sing with the spirit. What do you mean? I'm going to sing with a good attitude. And I will sing with the understanding also. So you got to have the right attitude. Don't come to worship thinking that God owes you something and he blessed you all the week and all your lives and you can't allot an hour a week to come and worship God, shame on you. We owe God this. And God, watch it, watch it. It, it is imperative that we worship God the way he tells us to do it. We got the right to answer. And listen, on the first day of the week, which is the Lord's day, I am, I am centered on the first day of the week. I, it's the highlight of the week to worship our God. And let me tell you something. Don't let anybody or anything or any place keep you from worshiping God. I, well, and I got to go to work. Well, if you're working and you don't got to the place where you can't worship God, you need to remember this. You need to try to find some kind of way to come with the saints on the first day of the week to worship God at least for one hour and fellowship with the saints and commune with the Savior and the saints on the first day of the week, we owe that to God. And we need to have a proper attitude. And no man going to keep me from worshiping my God. It is God, Paul said, through him and in him, we live, move, and have our very being. Everything that I have, everything, amen. God gave it to me. He gave me my life. He gives me breath. He gives me health. He gives me wealth. And you mean to tell me I'm going to let some man keep me from worshiping God in the proper way? No, ma'am, and no, sir. He's my God. Now, that's the attitude I have toward worship. And it's not a time for playing. And worship is not a time for entertainment. It's a time to give homage to God. We reverence our God, and he is the God of heaven. And he sent his son, and we might have a right to the tree of life. And on the first day of the week, he was resurrected from the grave. Declared all powers given in heaven and earth. Forty days later, he went back to heaven. Dispatched the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit brought this word. And he's guiding us today through the word. I'm, I love it. Don't you love it? Now, let's go a little further here now. We looked at the aim. That's God. We looked at the absolute. That's must. Now, we looked at um, the attitude. We got to have the right attitude. Don't let nobody stop you from worshiping God on the first day of the week. And then we have not only in spirit, but also in truth. What do you mean? That's the authority. You can't worship God any way you want to worship him. What do we have? Prayer. You need to pray. Watch it. When we come to pray, we need to pray things. Use scripture stuff in our prayer. Right? We need to pray and give homage and ask God and tell God how good he's been to us and how we think. And we need to praise our God. We need to pray to God. Pray. Who? All of us. Pray to God Almighty. That's in our worship. And all right? Then we preach. What are we going to preach? We've got to preach stuff that's in truth, a thought. You can't preach anything you want to preach. Many times individuals get that now. And many times individuals don't understand Watch it. You can't preach in a church. Somebody say, oh, these are earthly churches. That don't really mean anything. What are you talking about? Where did you get that? God has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And Peter said, if any man speak, let us speak as the artists of God. And Peter also said, watch it, that God give us all things pertaining to life and godliness. And Paul said, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So if you're doing this thing and preaching stuff that's not in faith, what church, any church would do? 
You mean to tell me Christ shed his blood and bought one church and you have the audacity to stand up and say, well, these don't make no difference. Yes, it does. If the Lord didn't establish the church, what are you doing in it? If you can't read about your church in the Bible, please tell me why are you in it? Well, somebody said don't make any difference. Don't believe that. Don't fall for that. That's elementary stuff. That's childish stuff. Because you got to be in the right church to worship God. And the church of Christ is in Christ. Romans 12, 4 and 5. The one body, which is the church, is in Christ. And the temple of the Lord is in Christ. What is the temple of the Lord? That's the church and that's the worship feature. And until a person get in Christ, you're wasting your time talking about worship. That's good, isn't it? Well, so we pray. There's preaching. Preach the gospel. Preach the word only. Now, after preaching, watch it. There's singing. What do you mean singing? Singing. Not no choir. See how these guys mess things up? These churches? A choir. What choir? Everybody that's worshiping sing. So what do you need a choir for? If it's a choir, it's one big choir. It's not some little group sitting on the side up there behind the pulpit with a piano and organ over here and they're playing and they're out there clapping. That's not worship. Because in New Testament worship, the whole congregation sing. Ephesians 5 and verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. The Bible says in Colossians, teaching and admonishing one another. If they're up singing and you're sitting back enjoying yourself, they're worshiping and you're not. Everybody's got to worship. Everybody's commanded to sing. So you got a little choir in your church and the folks out there padding, raising their hands and all that shouting and stuff, they're not praising God. Y'all having a good time, but you're not worshiping God because in the New Testament church, everybody's singing. And can I tell you something else? No authority. Listen to me. Got to be nice because many of you got them. And I said from the very beginning that our worship is done according to the New Testament. Now, I want any of you preachers show me authority for mechanical music and worship. Now, you're using it. Show it to me. I'll guarantee you, every one of you, you're going to go back to the book of Psalms to get your instrument. That's what they use on the Old Testament church. We're talking about the New Testament church. There's no authority for instrumental music. If everybody, if, if we got a command to play music, that means everybody got to play an instrument. But we do use an instrument in worship. What? Yeah. Brother Sandy, you believe in instruments? Yeah, I've got one. What is it? It's in me. Making melody in your heart to the Lord. And all of us was born into this world with that instrument. And that's what God wants. He don't want some mechanical instrument. All these pianos and organs. Somebody said, well, we're having a good time jamming. Well, let me tell you something. When I hear you on television and radio, a blind man would think it's a nightclub because it's the same, same music. That's worldly stuff. You don't want that. He wants you to worship him with what he gave you. He don't need some dead piano or an organ to worship him. So, Brother Shannon, well, don't you know in the book of Psalms, I just told you to stop going back to the Old Testament to try to get your style of worship. That was people for people back then. It is not for us today. We're under the New Testament. So we're the same. You come to James Road congregation, you're here singing and making melody in our heart. Uh, singing words. You won't hear whistling, no hand clapping, humming, sing, vocal music. What kind? The specific, specific vocal music that he wants is singing. Not whistling and not humming, but singing. Ephesians 5, 19. So we got preaching, we got prayer. Got the Lord's Supper. Take the Lord's Supper every first day of the week. We find in the Acts 20 and verse 7, on the first day of the week, 
they partook of the Lord's Supper. And we do this until he comes again. Is that all right? Then singing, praying, preaching, Lord's Supper, giving. Why should we give? Should we pay tithe? That was the law under the law of Moses. Here you go again. And all you preachers that's teaching these folk, they have to pay tithe. No, that was 10%. That's not for us today. Well, what is for us today? God didn't put no number. So if he didn't put a number, what, not in the New Testament. 10%, well, it may be that you ought to give 50%. Wait a minute. I, I stopped you, didn't I? Yeah. You, you think you can put 10 No, no. How's your love for the Lord? How is your love for the Lord? Well, we'll take this up again. I, I try to give uh, as much as I can to the Lord because I could never pay him back for what he'd done for me. How does a man be saved? Hear the gospel, believe it, repent of sins, confess Christ, baptize into Christ. And when you're in Christ, you're in the church and you have the right to worship God every first day of the week. I see my time is gone and... Uh, uh, well, I'd like to go for longer, but my time won't permit. And I'll tell you what, I'm enjoying this, and I'm enjoying you watching, and I would love to see you in a personal way and teach you one-on-one -on -one God's Word. May God bless and keep you uh, till the next time. God bless you and bless your family and bless your life. Bless everything about you. We hope you continue to watch this television program. Thank you so very much for watching us. A message from heaven has been presented by the Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. We're located west of the intersection at James Road in Hollywood. Visit us each Lord's Day where you will receive a cordial greeting. Our schedule of services are Sunday Bible class at 9.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. Sunday worship at 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Call us at 901-357-9090. Also, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.jamesrdchurchofchrist.com. Or you can email us at jasrdcoc at bellsouth.net. Thank you for tuning in to today's telecast. And remember, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us, and we will do thee good. Until next time, we bid you good day.